We can visualize the magnetic lines of force or magnetic flux by sprinkling iron filings onto the plexiglass. An individual magnetic line of force is called a Maxwell. The magnetic field in the bar magnet is produced by the spin and velocity of the charged particles, the electrons. The end of the bar magnet is rectangular with an area in square meters. With the total number of magnetic lines of force emanating from this end of the magnet, we can determine the density of the magnetic lines of force or magnetic flux density. We are now able to measure the magnetic flux density of this bar magnet with our Gauss meter. From our measurement, we can determine the number of magnetic lines of force, or Maxwell's, by using the previous formula. We can also produce a magnetic field by wrapping some wire around the material. The magnetomotive force F is the ampere term and the magnetizing force H is the ampere term per meter. When we wrap a coil of wire around different materials, we notice a change in the resulting magnetic field density in Tesla, even though we maintain the same magnetizing force, ampere turns per meter. We can now introduce magnetic permeability nu. By maintaining a constant magnetizing force, the resulting magnetic flux density in Tesla will be determined by the permeability of the material. In this example, the permeability of the aluminum rod is close to that of free space. There are a number of references available which provide the permeability of various materials. With the following coil windings or turns, DC resistance, AC volts and ampere measurements, we can calculate the inductance in Henry by using impedance ZL and the inductive reactance XL. We can also calculate the peak AC current. We can then calculate the reluctance R. Ampere turns divided by reluctance gives us Weber's. We can finally calculate the number of individual magnetic lines of force or magnetic flux flowing through this magnetic circuit.